Welcome to my opinion here on My Opinion TV. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell. So as soon as a video is released, you'll be one of the first to be notified. And this morning we want to look about we want to look on three stories. One that is presently a breaking news where two persons have um, been found dead in Portmore this morning. And the other we want to look about is the three persons, including a one-year-old girl who was shot last night in Featherbed Lane. And then we want to look about the flight attendant who created public mischief in Jamaica. But first up, we want to go to the Jamaica Observer. Not only the Jamaica Observer having this story circulating, but we saw it also on social media where police investigators are now at the scene in Portmore, St. Catherine, where the bodies of a man and a woman were found this morning. The, the man has been identified as Nicholas Newville, a coach at Calabar High School, while the woman, woman's identity is not yet known. Well, this is a sad story, sad situation. Where their bodies have been found in Portmore is an era where people teach persons to drive. Driving instructors use that era regularly to teach people to drive. Don't know what's the situation. Um, most of the time when you hear man and woman being killed like this, sometimes, you know, it's a love affair going wrong or something like that. Or they could actually be pounced upon by gunmen and killed. But it's a sad story. The whole Calabar community is, is plunged into mourning this morning. Based on that, we haven't confirmed the identity of the female, but we hope the identity will be revealed as soon as possible. And we'll hope to find out as soon as possible too what's the cause of death. But as we speak, police investigators are at the scene where the bodies of a man and a woman found this morning in Portmore and I think it's right across from NCB in Portmore and as I said before this is an area regularly used by persons who are teaching persons to drive. Driving instructors use this area very frequently you know to teach students to drive etc. It's also an area where you know lovers would go and teach their other half to drive too so it's not necessarily driving instructors but um Nicholas Newville, a coach at Calabar, not certain which um, which team he coaches at Calabar, but that's what the observer is saying this morning. Nicholas Newville, a coach of Calabar, um, his body was also found. The woman's identity is not yet known, but we hope that, as I said earlier, the investigators will come to some conclusion quickly. And we'll know what's the cause of death, what's the motive. But it's not a good story to dwell on. Because most of the time when you see things like these, it's considered murder-suicide. However, as I said, at this point the investigation is early. So you can't rule out anything they could be pounced upon by men there. But we're holding on to hear what transpired. So... Let me know what you think in the comment section, but as soon as we get any more information, we'll disclose it here on My Opinion TV. The other story we are tracking is that three persons, including a one-year-old girl, were shot and injured when gunmen invaded their home on Featherbed Lane in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, on Sunday, February 14. One of the victims has succumbed to his injuries. Dead is 23-year-old Andrew Thomas of Ensom City, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. And the reports are coming from the Spanish Town Police at about 9.15 p.m. Thomas was at home with other family members when armed men entered the premises and opened gunfire hitting a baby girl and another relative. Thomas ran but was reportedly chased and shot multiple times. A joint police military team responded to the incident but they came under heavy gunfire and had to initially take cover. No member of the security team was injured. The gunmen escaped in the area. Now clearly 
based on what we are reading here, these men definitely went for Andrew Thomas because he ran and they chased him and shot him multiple times. But at the end of the day, a child is caught in the midst of this careless nonsense. Whether it's a gang related, whether it's whatever per whatever reason the shooting took place, a child life was almost taken away based on the nonsense and the callous thinking of these criminals. And we hope that this child the, the injury is not considered life-threatening because we're getting to understand that she actually got a shot in her leg. But we hope that the, the injury to the leg is not that bad that will create amputation because, you know, that's another thing to live with. And this one-year-old girl, one year -old girl had no issues with anyone, clearly. But at the end of the day, someone in her household had issues with somebody or they decided to come and take out somebody in her household household and she's left nursing a wound now what our future in jamaica is suggesting not even the kids are safe the old ladies are not safe the old men are not safe the blind the deaf the crippled absolutely nobody is safe and based on the time this actually happened the curfew would have been in place but as you know these gunmen they have no respect for law and order they go about doing their thing and is as if they don't care because the law will not catch up on them. But the police actually responded. And clearly, maybe these guys are carrying really high-powered weapon. The police had to take cover. Although it might have not been a, a lot of police or military. Well, it said a joint police and military team. So clearly, these gunmen actually... Sometimes these men know the area. So it's easier for them to get away the security forces or the persons who on the security team who responded, some of them might not even know the area and how the area is set up. So they just rush in, but these gunmen know the area. So it's very difficult for policing, especially if you know the area of Featherbed Lane. And if this incident actually took place in one of those lanes that is zinc fenced. So nevertheless, we thank God the life of the child was spared, but at the end of the day, clearly, this child might have known Andrew Thomas, but at one year old, she might not even know what, what really happened. But we hope her injuries will be healed soon, and we hope that the police will do their investigation and find the perpetrators of this act. But as it stands now, the Andrew Thomas of Ensom City, he was he appeared to be the main target, but as you know, you go these criminals they go they just fire widely, and at the end of the day the child was caught in the midst of it. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and also subscribe. The final story we want to look at is the incident involving. Flight attendant Kalina Collier, who created public mischief that she was kidnapped when, in truth and in fact, she was quarantined in an hotel after being confirmed with COVID 19. And she created a stir on social media, and a lot of Jamaican persons were reaching out because she, she publicly stated by the video on Instagram that she was held against her will by wicked people at a hotel in jamaica now the damage that she did to jamaica and the hotel is so huge that this thing went across social media in no time she then deleted the video however by that time you know social media operates by the time you do a video on social media it goes viral in a second collier's video led to thousands of people on social media which suggested she was either abducted or kidnapped in jamaica or was a victim of human trafficking and we know persons were all over social media asking persons to to, uh, to see what they could do for Miss Collier but she eventually revealed in a video posted on Instagram that she was in fact in quarantine due to the provision of Jamaican's law because she tested 
positive twice for COVID-19. Now, she left Jamaica yesterday for the United States. And while she left, a lot of persons are disgruntled because this was public mischief. This went all across the world. Bad, bad publicity for Jamaica. And to see her just left like that without any charge, anything, um, a lot of persons were left disgruntled. I myself felt bad about the entire situation. But when I just saw the video, um, I thought something was amiss here. And something just did not smell right. But um, following Nationwide, they did an interview with prominent attorney, Peter Champagne, and he says, because Miss Collier did not file a formal complaint to the police with the false in information, there hadn't been no legal grounds to charge her for public mischief. He said it should be noted that creating public mischief is a statutory offense. Champagne said that Collier controversy may point to a need for the law to be reviewed to better hold people accountable for spreading false information on social media. She allegedly faked her abduction while she was held in Jamaica. Now, the police high command, police communication unit disclosed that Miss Collier was never in danger and eventually she left the island yesterday back to united states but jamaica should put in some restrictions for this lady this lady should never just get up tomorrow and come back to her country like that the damage this woman has done to the country she must face consequences for her action we can all understand the fact that that she did not report to the police so it is not categorized as being public mischief and be charged but the Tele the tourism ministry and other persons intricately involved in person visiting our country, we should be able to put some restrictions, some ban, some something against her that one would either forced forced her to publicly apologize for erroneous and false information that have left Jamaica in a bad spot. Right? Because Jamaica is, is Jamaica crime rate and Jamaica's I mean incidents like this have taken place in Jamaica before, so she played on it. And because she played on it, a lot of persons gravitated and bought into it. But now that we all find out that it was fake, nothing like that, this woman should be placed on some ban, maybe a two year ban or something. But she should not just get away scot-free. We all understand, based on what Peter Champagne has said, that she can't be charged because she did not make a formal report to the police. However, we have to put system in place. And the damage this woman has done to the hotel is also can be also irreparable. But, nevertheless, let's see what the authorities will do. Let's see what the, the hotel will do. We see the American Embassy has come out and made a statement that you know they are like they are tied they can't say anything because they're under certain type of act they can't say nothing but i hope the hotel and the jamaican authorities will put measures in place to prevent a reoccurrence of this incident and to st to put some form of punishment to miss collier but let me know what you think in the comment section don't forget to like share subscribe click the notification bell so as soon as a video is released, you'll be one of the first to be notified. Until next time, be safe. Take care of your children. Look out for a neighbor. Look out for a loved one. And most of all, keep it locked on My Opinion TV.